November 25th, 1999. In the summer, the temperature can climb to more than 90 degrees, and there's no air conditioning. I love it. I wouldn't trade it in for all this in Japan. It's in the basement of one of the largest homeless shelters in the country. I love doing this. And, and for me, every day is a joy to come here. The ceiling leaks. I get dirty, too. Yeah, I don't mind. Okay? And I love it. I love it. Oh! Woo! And if we told you that they serve 3,000 meals a day, well, that's only half the story. Tonight, second helping. Turning lives around at DC Central Kitchen. From ABC News. This is Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. I'm sorry to keep doing this to you. Most of the time, statistics are a drag, but I'm going to hit you with some numbers again anyway. If these don't blow you away, then maybe we should just stop keeping statistics. Anyway, the U.S. Department of Agriculture estimates that we waste about 96 billion pounds of food in this country every year. Can you even imagine 96 billion pounds of food? It is just a staggering amount of excess, sufficient to provide every man, woman, and child alive in this country with an extra pound of food a day, 365 days a year. Trust me, I've done the math. So would somebody please explain how it is that 36 million Americans, among them 14 million children, how is it possible that all those people live in households which suffer from hunger, or what the USDA euphemistically calls food insecurity? It is that question which drove Robert Egger nuts. He used to be a restaurant manager, and he thought it would be a great idea to gather edible leftovers and contribute them to a soup kitchen. He was told that that would be against health regulations. It isn't. So he started doing it. In fact, he created a network for collecting food here in Washington, and then he began training the jobless and the homeless and former substance abusers in the skills of food preparation, creating jobs as well as meals. Now he's got four 12-week job training programs going every year, and at least 25 other cities have picked up some of Egger's ideas. Anyway, cameraman Fletcher Johnson thought you might like to see how it works. So he followed one of the classes from the beginning. So this Thanksgiving gift to all of us is from Fletch and producer Catherine Cross. If I could show up at 6 o'clock in the morning at that liquor store every day when it opened, I could be up here at 8.30. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I just got out from doing three and a half years from being incarcerated, just trying to better my life, you know. It's just another beginning, you know. Uh, give me a chance to get my life together, start all over again. I just want to welcome you today. I am the director of the kitchen. You all represent a long, long, long line of people who have come through this program. Right? It's day one for the new class at D.C. Central Kitchen. 30 people almost evenly divided between men and women. Now this is business here. It's, a, it's, it's almost a partnership between us. In other words, if you agree to help us go out there and help prepare 3,000 meals every day that look good and taste good, and you study and you show up and you work, we'll get you a great job. So it's a very simple deal. We're about training people who have serious issues. And they're, they're not all going to take. And in some classes, everybody does great. Some are dismal failures. At 8.30, that means you need to be in this room with your apron, with your hairnet, with your books, whatever you need for the day. It doesn't mean in here at 8.30 eating like, OK, I'm about to put this away. That means at 8.30, you need to be ready to rock and roll right here. Tammy is the the hard line out there in the kitchen. Tammy is the one who is rarely fooled, who is rarely tricked or led astray. Tammy's a hard sell. As I stated to all of you prior, that your analysis tests are done and they're done randomly. And for those who don't know what random means, I pull them when I feel like it. 
or I feel there's a need. Any other questions? I'm kind of play. Probably it's a bad guy here. <laughs> I'm the enforcer other than Marianne, but I'm probably in the enforcer. No big earrings. Uh, you don't want to wear bracelets. Um, and absolutely no fingernail polish. Your nails should be trimmed. And the reason for the, you, you want to keep your uh, earrings and you don't want to have any bracelets on because sometimes that kind of thing gets hung up and you'll end up really seriously hurting yourself. I don't care how hard I push or pull or tug or talk or whatever I do, if, you know, if they ain't willing, it, it, I mean, just a little bit, it ain't, I, I don't stand a chance. This is a freezer. This is where we keep most of our meat. We have a sink here. This is the pots area. Colanders, bowls. So when I ask you for hotel pans, this is what I'm talking about. I gotta watch everybody. Mary Ann's partner in the kitchen, former Marine, Frank McKinney. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm ready to cut a devil, bring it back that oh, wait, way. Come here, right. come here, come here. Come right. here. This floor cost me $30 a box. Now I could take it out of your old stipend. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no? No, no. All right. You know, I don't use scare tactics to intimidate. I guess I do. I guess I do. Yeah. And, and it works. It, it actually works. Get the rest of this chicken. First of all, we want to move this meat. Watch me. We want to put black beans in there. There's not a lot of room for um, people to dog paddle. I mean, this is really sink and swim. It's, it's cooking through osmosis. When you're cooking for this many people, hey, they'll learn real quick. It's down to work now. It's down to who's going to who's going to tough it out. William Simon, ex-con, former crack cocaine user. My past was real messed up, robbing, stealing, selling drugs, you know, and all that's changed. Just living my life, you know, like I'm supposed to live it. I got frustrated at first because I put in applications, you know, and basically nobody called me back, you know, and I had previous experience in cooking, you know, so I just want to go to school, you know, get my food handler's card and start over, you know, do the right thing the rest of my life, live you know, productive citizen. I think a lot of people write off people that are receiving public assistance or just write people off that are homeless or in shelters. They don't have individuals that are in their corner that's with them. Everybody's downing them. Everybody's expecting them to fail. Not everyone has a choice, you know, until they get here to the kitchen. This is their option. This is your choice. Take care, man. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Sears. Work together. That's the whole mission, to work together. Melvin Roy, recovering alcoholic and addict, is now a student and to these volunteers, a teacher. He and his wife are expecting their first child. When I use, it just turned me into a monster. Ain't no whole lot, in no way I can explain it. It, it turns me into a different person. I forget every, everything I learned, everything, the values my mother taught me and the wife don't matter child in her stomach don't matter. You know what I'm saying? The only thing that mattered to me was just drugging, chasing that drug, you know? And I just don't want to live like that no more. I don't think my wife and my mother can go through it no more. I, you know, if, if, if I choose to use again, to be honest, I don't even want them there for me, because I ain't going to do nothing but her. I can't do it anymore. Do I have enough? So hopefully this is it. Hopefully this is it. If you stay clean, you wouldn't have no problem if you follow through on it. But that's the key word, if you stay clean. But see, it's a, one thing about that I learned, it's a constant battle. See, I'm going to be an addict for the rest of my life. But see, I don't have to be a practicing addict. You know what I'm saying? The seven-word prayer when things aren't going the way they should be is simply this. God, don't let me think this way. Isn't that simple? God, don't let me think this way. 
I want to offer that to you when you get into a situation where you really kind of need to reach out and get some help that's not in you, I guarantee that prayer works. Ron Swanson is a former minister. He meets with the class each morning. A lot of what I do is kind of putting my arms around trainees and, and just say, you know, stay focused and, and you know, don't, don't let what's going to happen this day get you down and cause you to want to quit because this too will pass. We focus on, I mean, simple things like being on time, coming every day, uh, working, uh, teamwork, uh, following inst instructions, really basic things that, that a number of our students struggle with in learning that or relearning it. How you gonna get a violation in your code? Excuse me? How you get a violation, how you still get a violation in your code? If you Same called in? Be late. Because late lateness is not tolerated. We need you to understand how important it is that you're on time. What our employers say to us when you hire somebody, what is it that you want from an employee? And they say, I want someone who is on time, who follows directions, who gets along with the team. And if a training instructor feels that you're having a problem following directions, being on time, being in uniform, getting along with the team, we're going to point it out to you. It's not personal. This is business. You know, you have to be accountable. They know nothing about accountability. They know nothing about personal responsibility. And when you stand there and you try to tell them that, they get defensive because they, 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 they've never lived it. Why are you out here? Get some air, man. Right? It's back there. Put you can't, but you're not supposed to leave your station. Your jackets open up incorrectly. I just want to be that hand in the middle of their backs, pushing them. You know, and that's what, and that's what, that's what they want. You know, they they want you to push them. They actually believe in what they've lived, and they don't know anything about um, the other side. I used drugs for over 20, uh, 25 years. I was a heroin addict, and I lived in dysfunction. My father's an alcoholic. Um, all my, mostly all of my brothers and sisters are either drug addicts, alcoholics. And I just came to a point in my life where I had decided that I didn't want to keep, continue to live like that. I'm on the other side of the fence now, and I can sit down and honestly say to them, toe to toe, that I know what you're going through. You know, let me tell you how I did it. What's up, babe? I'm doing some drug tests. These are the random drug tests. Oh, Sensitive enough to detect marijuana, cocaine, PCP, or heroin use from weeks early. Frank, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys. Could you go in with Melvin? No. Watch him. We ran into that with the hiding the urine behind in the bathroom. Denial is a, is a big thing. With, with a lot of our clientele. I get to see the reality. I get Have a seat. You couldn't go? And I'm not even going to fool myself because I use one. Okay. Now, what did you do on Monday? My work. This was in before we had our discussion about the program or after? It was after. It was after that class before. on Monday? Yeah, yeah. William Simon, who swore he'd make it through the program, smoked a joint with friends a few days early. And you knew William's dirty. Yeah. For what? Marijuana. He smoked on Monday. Um, after the after class, after we went through the rules and the regulation. He's gone. We're going to have to let you go. Hi, right, William. The best thing we can do is, is to talk to them, dismiss them, encourage them to find recovery. But we have to say, ultimately, you're responsible for your own life. And until you take that responsibility, this and nothing else is going to work for you. That's the reality that offsets the, the sadness and the tragedy and we really have to see it that way.
What's the minimal internal temperature for poultry? 165. What's the minimal internal temperature for pork? 155. Minimal internal temperature for beef. What's mirepoix? There have been the demonstrations. Thing we're, going we're going to do a, um, uh, a chicken breast supreme. Tests. Melvin Roy, come forward. Small victories. Tracy. And defeats. Always defeats. Calvin Green, a classic. Three quarters of the way through the program, he went back to drugs. He was very hard working. Within the last two weeks, we've kind of noticed just behavioral differences. He was constantly complaining he wasn't feeling well, that he would be late, he would miss a day. In this particular group, they knew it. So I think for them to hold on to that and know that he was using, and for them amongst themselves to try to help him without us kind of finding out, which they knew was going to happen and um, was hard for them. So they also kind of feel a sense of relief, like, whoo, okay, it's out now. A lot can happen within 12 weeks. Commitments falter, lives change. Man, oh man, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. Lives are created. I just want to be with her forever, man, you know? I just watch my kids grow up, man. I just want to grow old with my wife, man, you know? I'm 31, man. Nobody never, ever took the time out to do that for me. Never. You know? She, she risked her life for me, man. And for our baby, you know? I just... I don't know, man. Do you all know that Dimitri got a job? I heard he did. Dimitri got a job. In fact, he was offered three three jobs the same day. We had 100% placement last time, even before graduation, and that could even be true this time. I feel much better about myself. You know, I got a little bit more confidence. You know, and then my daughter called last night and said she loved me, so that really boosted. me, so you know what I'm saying? They're anxious to get out of here, and I'm anxious to let them fly the coop. Graduation day, held in an auditorium at Georgetown University Law Center. Earlier, the class met at the kitchen for the last time. There's a big difference between when you first got here and, and, and you now as you're leaving. You came in with some gifts, you got some gifts, and there are more gifts to achieve out there. So I wish you well. Uh, my family, you know, we've never had a lot. And it's always been a struggle, you know, my mother had. You know, a lot of kids. I had ten brothers and two sisters. So, without a father. So, it's been hard for me coming up, basically raising myself. So, you know, the opportunity that I have today, you know, I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity and try to remain um, drug free. One time I was going to leave, you know what I'm saying? But I really thank my aunt, Tammy, Tina, the whole crew for putting more trust that I ain't, that I ain't think I have it myself. It's this training program, man, opening a lot of doors for us, man. Keep your head up, go through them, man. You know, and I hope to see all y'all on the other side of them doors, man, because I, I plan on going through them, man. You know, keep your head up, man, let's do this. And all I want to ask my classmates, if they have a moment with me, can we tell a little prayer for the kitchen and everybody in here? Give us this day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And at least not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the God is the King, the power, and the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. There's something we're doing here. We can't quite figure it out. Is it the power of food? What is it that gets into people that, that makes us, these things work? America needs to see the truth. They need to see what people can do if you give them a chance. It ain't about pity. It's never about pity. It's about equality. It's about a chance and people taking that chance. There's been a lot of quotes. Before we go out and we finish today, I'd like to quote from the book of James. Very importantly, it's all about one thing. You all got the skills. It's just about getting up off of that thing. Hit it. 
Everybody ready? <laughs> Keep it going. Turn it up a little, would you? You all are back. Please don't come back. You all ready? It's all about getting up off of that thing. When we come back, an update on the students of D.C. Central Kitchen. It's actually been more than a month now since graduation day at D.C. Central Kitchen. Sixteen of the twenty graduates are working in full or part-time jobs. Melvin Roy is employed full-time as the head chef in a shelter. Gregory Brown has interviewed with a Washington hotel and is waiting to hear back. Kelvin Green, who dropped out of the program with only a few weeks left, says he'll try it once more. And the D.C. Central Kitchen hasn't heard from William Simon. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, happy Thanksgiving and good night. You can order a transcript or video cassette of this or any other Nightline broadcast by dialing 1 800 Call ABC or visiting abcnewsstore.com on the World Wide Web. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.